dear GenLife health advisors and GenLife customers. My name is Dr. Peter Vertigam. I'm the co-founder of GenLife, and today I am going to take you through uh, one of our gen test reports, in fact, two of them, because I want to give you a comparison between two individuals. Um, I've been uh, getting a lot of requests to um, do this video and make sure that people understand what is actually part of the gen test report, what it shows you, what it doesn't show you, and how we get to the results that we present in this report. Now, first of all, uh, I'd like to tell you that uh, this report, of course, is created to make the Gen Health product. Some people ask us, uh, you know, can we do the test, for example, alone? And we say no, because, you know, we're not in a DNA testing company per se. We are a company that wants to produce a nutritional supplement that prevents uh, relevant uh, health concerns that we're facing today. And we want to do so matching your unique biochemistry. And that means that the test for us is a tool to be able to make that um, nutritional product Gen Health for you uniquely. As I said, I've decided to uh, upload on the screen two individual reports to give you a nice uh, individual comparison. First of all, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, DNA and genes. Um, DNA, of course, is part of our genetic code. It contains everything uh, that our body needs to know to function properly. It contains of millions and millions of different codes, letters, uh, a, C, T, and G. Those are the uh, four letters of which our DNA code is encompassed. And this DNA code is split up in genes. And those genes are, for most people, exactly the same. In fact, uh, more than 99.5% of all the genes are the same. But these genes can have little variations. Uh, you, you can imagine that because there's such a huge number of letters in that code, some of these letters can be varied a little bit. And since these genes, this little part of DNA code, encodes for proteins and enzymes and mechanisms in our body, a little variation in that code will have a different outcome. For example, an, an enzyme that it codes for will be not working as efficiently anymore if there is a little variation. Or it may, in fact, be working better. You know? And those little things will have an, an outcome in your health. Sometimes it will uh, improve your health over time. Sometimes it will be a hurdle to some of the uh, health concerns that you have later in your life. So by testing for all these different genes, we are able to provide you with a, a clear overview of health concerns that you have a certain risk for, higher risk for, or a lower risk for. Now, we didn't test all different possibilities that we can. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to test for health concerns that um, are not really relevant. Eh? We wanted to test for health concerns that people know, that people are worried about, that people see in their uh, surroundings. And also, uh, we wanted to have only health concerns in this test where we have a nutritional angle to. It doesn't really make a sense to test for health concerns where we don't have a solution for. Remember, we are a nutritional uh, company. We are a dietary supplement company that provides gen health. So in order to be able to do that effectively, we limited the number of health concerns to those health concerns where we have a nutritional angle to, where we have enough scientific evidence that individual ingredients may have a benefit. Now, I'm going to take the video away and I'm going to show you the two reports that we will be looking at. The left one is mine. I'm going to be really uh, transparent and show you my complete report. And the right one is uh, a report of another uh, GenLife health advisor who has roughly the same age and who's a woman. So uh, I don't show you her name, of course, of, uh, of um, privacy reasons, but it's a good comparison. I'm going to go to the left. And if you go to your report downward, you're going to see our uh, welcoming letter uh, and then an explanation of, first of all, it's important to realize that your birth of, uh, your date of birth is also part of the test. And that is important because our gen health is going to be adapted to two things. One is your age and the other one is your, um, your weight. And as you can imagine, if you, in the end of the report, you have an advice on how many ingredients you need, what the levels of those ingredients are, um, you want to make sure that uh, it also is adapted to your age because as you age, you're going to need more of certain ingredients and less of others. And that's why your age is also an important part of it. Then we go down in the report and we see an explanation of how genes are influencing our health. It explains how many different genes there are, that genes encode for certain um, 
uh, enzymes and that uh, when variations in those genes occur, um, those enzymes may work better or less uh, good. Now, let's go into some of the examples of things that we've tested. Here you see on the first pages the genes that we have tested. There are in fact 52 different ones and they are grouped into uh, genes that have a specific outcome for the individual health concerns. Now, let's see, give you an example. Uh, the first one you see on the left, uh, CDH13. That is a gene which is very well known to um, encoding for a protein that protects vascular endothelial cells. And that means uh, the inside of your arteries, those are the endothelial cells, they can be susceptible to oxidative stress. And if you have uh, a gene that produces this protein very well and makes it very active and very efficient, you're going to be protected efficiently against that um, damage to vascular endothelial cells. Now, for some people who have a different uh, genotype than, than GG or GC or AT, that may determine a less effective protein. And that means you're going to be having more damage to those endothelial cells. And that, as a result, means that you have a higher risk for heart disease. In fact, if you have an optimally functioning CDH13 gene, you're going to have an optimally functioning protein, and that means you have resistance to atherosclerosis. Um, the next one, CHD58, um, this is encoding for a protein that regulates the susceptibility to coronary heart disease. Um, APOA5 uh, regulates plasma triglyceride levels, and as you may know, that is very important to determine your future risk of a heart attack. Uh, PON1 uh, binds to HD, HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. If you have an overactive PON1 enzyme, you're going to be uh, uh, preventing HDL cholesterol from coming in your bloodstream, and that means, and in its sense, that you're going to have less of a protection against heart disease. Um, let's take another one here, MMP3, for example, also well known. It's a metalloproteinase. It's known for um, effectiveness, effectively regulating wound repair. And if you have a good working MMP3, you're going to prevent the progression of atherosclerosis. Uh, you know, I, I can go for on, but uh, oxidative stress is also very important. Yeah? And oxidative stress is an underlying factor of many health concerns. Um, G, GSTM1 um, encodes for glutathion, glutathione S transferase, and it's going to be uh, more effective in detoxification of carcinogens, meaning that you're going to have a uh, lower risk for certain forms of cancer. Um, GPX1 uh, glutathione peroxidase converts the dangerous free radical uh, hydrogen peroxide into oxygen. So as you can see, all these genes that we have on this list, and there are 52 as I told you, all program for a certain protein. And if there is a certain variation, science has shown that that variation re results into a higher or lower uh, susceptibility for that individual disease. That is the basis of the DNA test, of the gen test. We know the variations and thereby we can calculate or determine your individual risk. And then once we know that risk, we go into the huge library of dietary supplements that have been proven over the last decades to have a beneficial influence on all these individual health concerns. Uh, think about, um, here, let's show you the last page here, nutritional genes for eyes. Uh, there are a couple of, of genes that we test here that determine your susceptibility to develop cataracts, for example, or to develop uh, age-related macular degeneration. Now, if you have an, an enlarged risk for age-related uh, age related macular degeneration, you are better to take a higher dose of lutein. Uh, lutein is a carotenoid that comes from spinach, from your normal food, and it is part of the yellow spot in your retina. And the yellow spot is very sensitive to high energy blue light. So if you are more sensitive than somebody else, the carotenoid lutein in your diet or in your Gen Health product is going to load up the lutein in your yellow spot. And that means it's going to be filtering out more effectively that high energy blue light. And that is going to be beneficial in prevention of age-related macular degeneration. Yeah? Very good example. Um, if you um, have a higher risk for cholesterol uh, buildup and atherosclerosis, your product is going to contain more phytosterols. Phytosterols is a naturally occurring component that belongs to the same class as cholesterol. And if you have that in gen health, because 
you are more susceptible to cholesterol absorption, phytosterols in your gut are going to uh, compete with the cholesterol absorption from your food, and thereby you're going to see an overall cholesterol reduction. Another example uh, which a lot of people have is, uh, is an, a risk for inflammation of their arteries due to high levels of homocysteine or even increased risk for Alzheimer due to homocysteine. And homocysteine is, everybody has it, but if you have too high levels of it or you're extra susceptible for it, then um, our product will provide you extra B vitamins because B vitamins are known to remove homocysteine and turn it into the harmless cysteine, which is a normal amino acid. So that's the thinking. Sometimes we uh, increase ingredients uh, because you have a higher risk. Sometimes we increase ingredients because you have proteins that use those ingredients to become more effective in protecting you for certain health concerns. And sometimes you will have lower uh, amount of ingredients like iron. Iron comes in a lot of people as a potential risk if they have too much iron. Now iron is important because it transports oxygen in our blood. But if you have a certain genetic variation that uh, makes you absorb iron more, effect more effectively than others, you may end up in a dangerous iron overload which accumulates in your joints, for example. And that is a potential harmful situation. So in that case, you want to have lower iron in your product. So that's a general thinking um, be, uh, in, in, the, um, in the way from gen test to gen health. Now, I'm going to go to the right report here of the, uh, the lady of the same age, roughly. And we're going to go to the same page here. And you will be seeing that um, the list of tested genes is, of course, the same because everybody gets the same genes tested. But the genotype, which is the last column, is different for both of us. So here, for example, for the uh, LCT, lactose intolerance uh, gene, I have genotype TT, and this lady has genotype TC. That means there is a different variation between us. Uh, for uh, our I genes, I have GG, she has AA. I have TC, that one is the same here. And for the last, the LOC um, gene, I have GG and C has TT. Now, those letters don't mean nothing to the layman person at this moment, but you can see that the last column is going to be different for everyone. And scientists, geneticists um, are uh, working all around the world to couple these variations to the different health concerns. Now, let's go into the practical results. The first one that we test for is your detoxification levels from mostly PAH uh, molecules. Those are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are byproducts of burning of fossil fuels, uh, coal, natural gas, and, and oil, for example, but also of, of barbecuing, uh, so like uh, turning uh, meat into black uh, components. That is um, components that you don't want to have in your system or smoke when, uh, from, from, from the pollution around us. Those contain those molecules and they are known to be particularly causing cancers in the long run if you have too much of them. That's why our body has developed a detoxification process to remove those components from your body. And as you can see here, our uh, genetic variation is different. I have TTGG and the lady has TT and CC. And the results in effectiveness of detox are different. In my case, I'm kind of towards the ineffective level, as you see on the arrow here, for detoxification of these poly polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And she is very effective in detoxification of it. So what does that mean in practice? That means I need more protective ingredients that help the enzymes that do this to become uh, better at what they do. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of saying our body knows exactly what to do, provided we give it the right tools to do so. And those are the nutrients. So in my case, I'm not so effective in removing these dangerous chemicals from my body. She is very effective in it. So I will have more protective ingredients to help my body do what it does best. Now let's look at the phase two detoxification from pesticides and heavy metals. You know, pesticides are molecules that come to us through fruits and vegetables because we spray chemicals on it when we produce those. Uh, heavy metals come, for example, from uh, drinking water, from pollution, from uh, fish is a very good example. They filter heavy metals from the sea, and when we eat those fish, they can come into our body. We also have a detoxification process in our body. 
In this case, the lady on the right is less effective in detoxification as I am. I'm still not perfectly effective, but she's, she's worse, meaning that she will see in her product um, more of uh, calcium, selenium, and zinc, for example, because these minerals are part of the enzymes that detox uh, our body from pesticides and heavy metals. Also, when we have more calcium, selenium, and zinc in our gut, we're going to be limiting the absorption of heavy metals from our food. So clear insight why she needs a stronger protection. It's interesting, yeah? So from the from the first chemicals, the cancer-causing chemicals, she needs less protection because she's more effective in cleaning it up, where in the second type of detoxification, I'm more effective. So that's how the product will be differing between us. Let's go to oxidative stress, a very important part of our health because it's so uh, determining our overall long-term health. As I look at the different tests that we have been doing, we see some small variations in the genotype. So I anticipate that the overall results are going to be somewhat the same. Now, let's look at the summary of the effects. Oxidative stress, we have a couple of very interesting results. First of all, we test your susceptibility to oxidative stress in the cells. In other words, how much oxidative stress you have there and do you need to take extra action? Don't forget, oxidative stress is a normal part of life. We need it to clean up pathogens in our body. We need it to reduce inflammation. But when it come, becomes too much, when we don't protect ourselves enough for it, we're going to be seeing um, um, increased damage to important parts of our body. Um, I have uh, a little bit increased oxidative stress, and she has some more seriously increased oxidative stress. That means her need for antioxidants is clearly increased in this lady and a little bit increased in mine. Now, we all know there are two types of antioxidants. One is the dietary antioxidants, for example, vitamin C, E, and, and A, or CoQ10, also a very popular antioxidant. And we also have um, proteins that are, uh, for no other reason in our body, to clean up uh, free radicals. Uh, glutathione peroxidase, for example. And interesting, that one needs selenium in order to work effectively. Now, what I see here is that um, let's look at the bottom here selenium we both have need the same requirement that means in that case both our glutathione peroxidase is working equally well so we need the same amount of selenium but in the types of uh of antioxidants that we better use because that's what also the test can tell you which antioxidants are going to be the best ones for us there's a big difference um, you may know that coq10 is not the active kind of antioxidant. It needs to be transformed first into UV quinol, which is the active antioxidant. And we need a protein to do that. And if we have a genetic variation that we do not have that protein working in our body, we cannot convert CoQ10 to to UV quinol. So for those people, it doesn't make any sense to use coenzyme Q10 because it's not going to do them any good. I've seen reports where people are completely impossible to convert that and they will have no CoQ10 in their product because it doesn't make any sense. This lady on the right has a very effective transformation of CoQ10 to ubiquinol. So I'm going to be seeing in her product a lot of CoQ10 because it's a very effective uh, antioxidant. In my case, I'm not so effective in it. I'm not completely impossible, but it's kind of halfway. That means I'm going to see a more of a mix between CoQ10 and uh, vitamin C, E, and A. Very important information. How much do I need? Which antioxidants do I need? How much minerals do I need to make my antioxidant protein system work as effectively as possible? Now, then we get into the different individual health concerns and the link to certain nutrients. You're going to be see, seeing reports where you have um, green arrows, which means that you need an increased amount of these certain ingredients to optimally protect you for that health concern. And you're going to have red downward uh, pointing arrows showing a decreased need of a certain ingredient. R remember the iron case. It's not always more is better. I mean, it, it depends completely on your individual situation. And we have sometimes no arrow means that the uh, recommended standard dose, that what we call the RDA, is enough for you. So it's going to be less, how much less, uh, more, how much more, or neutral. Now let's go to the first one. Nutritional genes, heart disease. Remember, we've tested all kinds of different uh, heart disease um, uh, uh, genes, variations. And there are a number of reasons why you can get heart disease. For example, uh, atherosclerosis, buildup of 
um, of plaque uh, from cholesterol in your in your body, which can come through inflammation, for example. Now, if you look at the differences here, I see a couple of differences. One is that I'm getting the advice to have extra DHA and EPA, which are the omega-3 fatty acids, whereas the lady has the opposite. Her advice is a re reduced amount of EPA and DHA. Now, this is a, it may sound strange, but it is important to know that these omega-3 fatty acids can be positive or negative. They're not always the same outcome in your body. They can also have inflammatory effects. And if you're more susceptible to that inflammation, you better take less of it because it's going to be counteractive towards your protection for uh, cardiovascular disease. Um, fiber is both high uh, advice to be more in our product. Uh, of course, fiber is not part of our product. Um, there are also dietary components here that have a general uh, advice towards the food that I take, like alcohol, like fiber, like cholesterol, like fructose and total fat. And you see those are the same advice for both me and the lady. But the lady has an advice to increase phytosterols in her product. And that is because it tells me that she is having a, uh, an important extra risk for cholesterol absorption. Apparently, her absorption mechanism in the uh, GI tract is more effective than mine when it comes to cholesterol. So for her, having a higher high heart disease risk, it's better to add some phytosterols to the product so that she will limit the uh, overflow of uh, absorption of cholesterol in her gut. So... Subtle differences, but very important outcomes, particularly the fatty acids. Not more is better. No, you need to fine-tune it exactly to your individual situation. Let's look at the second page, nutritional genes, blood. We're talking here about homocysteine. Now, homocysteine is a, um, as I told you in the beginning, a, a molecule that is known to cause inflammation into the uh, arterial walls. And inflammation is a problem because that can narrow the arteries and it can uh, increase your blood pressure and can uh, result into um, uh, a heart attack later in life. You better reduce it. If you do a test in the lab, blood test, you're going to see homocysteine very often part of that test. Homocysteine also has an effect in reduction or increased risk for Alzheimer. Now, the way to get rid of homocysteine is by giving you uh, extra vitamins, folic acid and B6. Uh, and that is going to break down homocysteine into the harmless cysteine amino acid. Now, you see here clearly that she needs a higher dose because she is more prone to having inflammation in her arteries. Or she may have a natural higher syn synthesis level or homocysteine. For me, it's also good to have higher B folic acid and B6, but I don't need so much of it because my risk is clearly lower. Again, a clear fine-tuning. Now, here, nutritional genes vitamin B2. For both of us, when this happens, you see there is no reason for her or me to have an increased or a decreased level of vitamin B2. That means I'm going to be seeing the RDA in my product. Now, let's go to the oxidative stress page, because it's always exciting to see the differences here. Here, you see all the known antioxidants. Uh, part of it are, is in our product. Some of them you get from your normal food. Uh, let's look at beta-carotene. Beta-carotene on the top is the source of vitamin A and is therefore a good antioxidant, fat soluble. And you see we both need some more, but she needs a lot more. And remember she was, she was more susceptible to oxidative stress in her report. That means her overall levels of all antioxidants are going to be higher. But uh, everybody needs antioxidants, me too, beta carotene as well, but not as much. Again, I don't want an overload because if you take you know, products from the supermarket, you very much have high doses because they think it's a great marketing story to give more and more and more, but it's not. You want to fine tune it exactly to what your body needs. Now, coffee is of course not part of our product, but coffee is a good natural source of antioxidants as well. That's why for both of us, it's increased. Interestingly, if you look here, caffeine, however, is decreased. Yeah? So don't confuse the two. Caffeine, of course, is part of coffee, but coffee is there because of the antioxidants. Caffeine is there uh, causing extra high blood pressure and other negative effects, and that's why it's advised to be reduced. In this case, uh, decaf coffee would be a very good one, you know, because you, you will drink more coffee, more antioxidants, but less caffeine. Now, these uh, minerals like manganese and selenium are part of the body's own antioxidative mechanisms. Uh, remember superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase. Those are two 
uh, antioxidative enzymes. Both, in both of them they're increased, but in her level, more increased than in mine. CoQ10 is clearly here. Remember, she was very effective in using CoQ10 because she can convert it into the active form. That's why she has a much higher level than me on CoQ10 because she can use it so much more effectively than I can. Very great information what we see here. Metabolism talks about um, type 2 diabetes and other metabolic processes. Now, let me see here. Overall, it looks roughly the same. So our genetic variations that determine the met met uh, metabolism are going to be comparable. Um, remember that she had a, a, an advice for heart disease for reduced EPA and DHA. Well, in this case, it's increased. So, you know, ingredients can have different outcomes for different health concerns. And when we look at the overall advice at the end, we're going to be seeing the average best amount of those individual levels. We see here not many differences. I see for both of us a um, advice to go lower in glycemic, high glycemic foods. Eh? High glycemic foods are foods that contain carbohydrates, sugar, that are quickly converted into glucose in our body. And since we're talking here about type 2 diabetes, if you have too much sugar in your body, too much glucose, you're going to be uh, developing quicker type 2 diabetes over time, meaning a reduced sensitivity of insulin. So, but it's, it's not a huge serious problem because the arrow is rather small. So both of us are not really susceptible uh, strongly to um, type 2 diabetes, but we might be we better take some uh, precaution to make sure that we don't get into this situation. Now, all the other vitamins here which have an effect of improving the metabolism are increased for both of us. Alzheimer. Look at this here. If there are any differences obvious? No, it looks like we're roughly the same in Alzheimer development risk. Um, Alzheimer, we, uh, we know that particularly the B vitamins are healthy for Alzheimer prevention uh, if you need them because you have an increased uh, homocysteine level. We know that EPA and DHA are very beneficial for Alzheimer prevention if you have the APOE2 gene because if you don't have that one, studies show it doesn't do any good, right? So again, there's a big variation in, in your genetic um, makeup and if certain ingredients are going to be helpful to you or not. Here we see the detox. Remember the detox differences. The lady was very uh, inefficient in heavy metal detoxification and that's why she has a lot more of these antioxidants and of these minerals. They're going to be helping our body to become better at detoxification and they're going to be um, helping limiting the absorption of heavy metals. For me, it's, it's a little bit there, but as you can see, a smaller amount of the different ingredients that are beneficial for that. Bones, osteoporosis. It's roughly the same. There are slight differences in the sizes of the arrows. Of course, calcium and vitamin D3 are the two most important ingredients if you have a tendency to have weak bones later in your life. And you see for both of us, the advice is to have an increase of those two ingredients. Also, vitamin C plays an important role in the making of collagen, which is part of bone uh, formation. And then um, other uh, uh, lifestyle ingredients like alcohol, coffee, um, are advised to be reduced in our product. Then the joints. Also clear difference here between her and me. Joints, the problem here is inflammation. Inflammation can happen in our cartilage in the joints and that can lead to painful joints, um, hurting, difficulty in moving around. And if you have a tendency to develop that, you can do something with, with nutrients. She doesn't have it, clearly, because there's no advice for any of the known ingredients um, to be taken more or less. She will have the normal recommended daily amount. She's fine with this. I'm not. I need, clearly, uh, protection, particularly the MSM. MSM, methane, is a very known anti-inflammatory molecule that is uh, part in, in our, can be found in our diet, but better taken a supplement to have adequate amount to reduce the inflammation risk. Same thing for DHA and EPA, which in my case have an anti-inflammatory effect. So again, a clear difference between us two. Now when it comes to gluten intolerance, we both have no problem. People who will have a gluten intolerance, we will see it here and we will see um, because those people will take no products that don't, uh, will take no products that contain gluten, they will need extra ingredients from uh, Gen Health to make sure that they do are uh, having the normal amounts of uh, these ingredients in their uh, daily requirements. Lactose intolerance, 
both of us have no risk and therefore no differences in uh, the amount of ingredients that we should take. And then finally, we have the nutritional genes in the eyes. Now, um, clear difference again. Uh, when we talk about eye health, we talk about the two major eye health concerns. One is cataract, uh, becoming uh, blurry of the lens, uh, which clearly um, can be prevented by taking more vitamin C, by taking more lutein. Um, and the other one is um, age-related macular degeneration. And you see she has a clearly higher risk for these uh, for both health concerns. And that's why her ingredients that are known to be preventive are scaled up uh, in the, the Gen Health product. For me, it's also there, but it's a little bit lower because my risk is a lot lower. Now, you must know that age-related macular degeneration is typically a, a female occurring disease. Females have a higher risk for developing that in general than men. So that also may be the explanation why she has higher levels of these ingredients. Then we come to the summary. And the summary is, you know, I, remember I told you some ingredients have need more for certain health concerns and less for other health concerns. So when you summarize it, you're going to have to make, uh, you know, a, a weighted average of the advice. So you see here on the left all the different ingredients that we have tested. There are a couple of pages like this and all the health concerns that we have tested. And you see the individual advices based on these tests. And then we come to a summary advice. And this is going to be the advice in your product. And that is for both clearly different. Because if we go then further on, we see the product that we advise that Gen Health is going to be um, consisting of for me and for her. I'm going to go down now here to the Gen Health product composition. This is on page 39. Let me go down here quickly and then let's look at the differences in those two products now the um, the composition of the ingredients is mostly for everybody the same and I say mostly because there are people who don't need extra omega-3 fatty acids and then they will not be part of the gen health product uh, some people don't need uh, methyl sulfonyl methane the MSN the anti-inflammatory ingredient and then it will not be part of that product but for the overall vitamins and minerals and also the uh, five super fruit extracts, they are going to be in everybody's product, only at a different level for everybody. Not the super fruits, they are at the same level for everyone because we believe in um, the, the, the overall beneficial effect of super fruit antioxidants. But uh, the minerals, the vitamins, the fatty acids, and some of the other ingredients are all scaled according to your requirement. Let's look at some examples. Um, calcium here. Calcium is exactly the same for us. So. We both uh, have an increased need for calcium. The RDA is 800. That's what the government advises you to have. We know because of our susceptibility for osteoporosis, we better take some more. Not huge amount of more, but a little bit more. 1,074 versus 800 milligrams. Um, folic acid, the B vitamins, uh, we see clear difference. Uh, the advice for the lady is 600 uh, micrograms, which is three times as much as the RDA, and that's because she's more susceptible to the homocysteine problem. If you give more folic acid, she's going to be having a reduced homocysteine risk. Now, I have a, had a lower homocysteine risk, so that's why my advice is also a bit increased, but not as much as increased as it is for her. Uh, iron, also a great example here. She has a high level of iron, 20.3, which is 1.5 times the RDA, which um, she is getting in Gen Health because she is less likely to have an overabsorption of iron. I have an overabsorption of iron risk, and that's why my iron level is lower than the RDA. It's 9.5 versus 14 as the RDA. It's better, it's good that I know this now because imagine I would take the normal supplement from the supermarket, I would have way too much iron in it, and that could cause an additional problem with my health. It could cause, in fact, a lot of joint problems because it collects in our joints. Um, look at lutein, the eye um, protective ingredient. I have five, she has 6.8, more, because she had a higher risk uh, for age-related macular degeneration. Now let's look at some other examples here. Omega-3, yeah, clear one. Now, I, my advice is to be 350 milligrams per day. Her advice is to be 700 milligrams per day. And omega-3 plays a role in many different health concerns, Alzheimer, cardiovascular disease, inflammation. So it is a, a, a number that comes from all the individual advices together. And she's better taking higher amount than I am. Phytosterols here. 
Her advice is 116 milligrams per day because she has a higher cholesterol issue, meaning that she better take some more phytosterols to prevent cholesterol absorption, where I only have zero. So my product doesn't even contain uh, phytosterol because my cholesterol susceptibility is much lower. That tells me I'm going to be less prone to have atherosclerosis or clogging of the arteries. Uh, let me take one more example. Uh, zinc here. Zinc is a, is a mineral that plays an important role in the cataracts. Eh? It's protection against uh, blurring of your lens. And her advice is 30. My advice is 18.4. It has to do with the, um, with the increased risk, in her case, for cataracts. So um, you don't want to have too much for the zinc as well. If you, if you take too much, then zinc is going to result in an overload and a problem. So in my case, because I have lower cataract risk, I better not take too much. Remember, it's not the case that always more is better. So those are our two different products. We're going to get our own unique Gen Health product. And if you want to read more about the microtransporters, you can read it in the book how the microtransporters are going to be um, maximizing the absorption of the different ingredients. And then, of course, we have a whole list of references in the book that you can read about what all these ingredients do for you, what they may contribute to, and then a whole list of scientific references as well that you can um, go through and look up yourself on the internet if you're interested. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for this um, report, um, for listening to this report explanation. I hope you learned something. It's a very nice thing to learn about yourself, but it, I thought it was very good to compare two reports, and you can actually see how it can be different between um, different individuals. Um, always, I'm, I'm here available for you if you want to have a specific detailed explanation about your individual report. You can always send me a request and we'll make that happen. Um, thank you very much and um, I'm hoping you have a very interesting read when you get your Gentrest report at home. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.